Hey, it's Kat back again with yet more animation. This time I'm going to look at actually doing something a little bit more productive with my animated ball. And we're going to look at making the ball stop based on a particular stopping condition. So in this case, I've got a paddle or a swatter. And what's going to happen if I click the ball, then it's going to stop bouncing. Okay, so if I hit it, it's going to stop. So let's look at some code that we could use to make that happen. Back to the boring names, I've got a new file called timer3. It's an exact copy of timer2 um, and now I'm going to start changing it. So obviously if I've got a little paddle that's following the mouse around, I need to have the mouse accessible. So I'm going to start by importing java.awt.event. And I need to implement two of the mouse listeners. So I'm going to implement the mouse listener and the mouse motion listener. And this should generate an error because those two listeners, they actually need certain methods to exist in my class uh, enabled to enable the program to run. So I'm going to hover over the name and say add unimplemented methods. If I scroll down, it should have added some methods down here. Okay, so I'm going to ignore those for the moment. I'm going to just collapse ball bounce because we're not making any changes there. We're actually also not going to make any changes. Oh no, we, we are going to make a change to init. We need to actually register those listeners. So we're going to say add mouse listener this and add mouse motion listener this. So we're just telling the program that it can listen for events. Just check your spelling on those, spelling and capitalization. Okay, uh, one of the other things that I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce a variable to keep track of the mouse. I'm going to also make it a, a an array like I did with the ball. And I'm going to start it at 0, 0. Okay, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce that paddle. So first up, I'm just going to get the paddle to draw on the screen. What color can we make this little guy? I'm going to go with green, I think. And so we're going to say G dot, what are we doing? We're filling a rectangle and we're going to have it at mouse zero minus 10. I'll explain in a moment and mouse one minus 10, we're going to make it 20 wide and 20 high. Now the reason that I've drawn it at the mouse position minus 10 for X and the Y is so that as the, the little paddle hovers, hovers around, the mouse cursor actually appears to be in the center of that as opposed to the top left of that. Um, you can make it so it's the top left and get rid of that minus 10 if you like, uh, but I think it looks a little bit neater where the cursor is the center of that paddle. Okay, so that's the only change that we're going to make to paint, so I'm going to hide that little guy. Um, and in terms of which of these mouse methods we're going to use, I'm going to ignore dragged, I am going to work with moved, and I am going to work with clicked. So I'm just going to move that little guy down here because I'm not going to use it. Now I need to use mouse move because I want the paddle to update its position every time I move the cursor. So I've gotten rid of that little override thing. I changed my mouse event to E and inside here I'm going to set mouse 0 to be equal to e.getx and I'm going to do the same for the Y but obviously that's mouse one. So remember that with the previous exercises, zero was always an X and one was always a Y. And I'm going to repaint that. Now, provided I haven't forgotten anything, this should run and it should allow a little paddle to be moved around the screen. Okay, so there's my paddle, there's my ball, I can chase it. Um, obviously, I haven't done anything in response to the clicking or making it stop. But there's my paddle. 
So as you can see, the cursor appears in the middle of the paddle as opposed to the top left corner of it. Okay, so now I want to think about actually getting it to respond to me. So changing that one to E. You don't need to, it's just a habit of mine. I'm actually going to copy everything from mouse moved and paste it into mouse clicked. And now inside here I'm going to have a giant if statement that basically asks if the ball is within the bounds of the paddle, then I want the timer to stop. So if this is similar to how we had the ball bouncing around the screen. We're testing for the left, the right, the top and the bottom edges and we're comparing the mouse and the ball this time instead of the rectangle and the ball. So we're going to say if mouse 0 plus 10, so remember that we did that centering thing, if that is greater than or equal to the ball of 0 and so we're saying, is it greater than this and less than this as well as greater than this and less than this for left, right, top, bottom. So it's got to be inside all of those for the statement to be true. So mouse 0 minus 10 less than or equal to the ball at 0. And remember that when we tested the right edge of the wall bouncing, we also needed to factor in the ball size. So we're going to add on the ball size there. What did we call it in this one? Ball underscore size. So that's the left and right. Now I'm going to copy that because I'm lazy. And I'm going to replace the zeros with ones. So if all of that is true, I want the timer to stop. So I want animation to stop. Now let's hope I've typed that correctly. Let's test it out. And there we go. The ball stopped. So if we run it again, any part of the paddle touching the ball should stop the ball. So test it out a few times. There we go. Now you could make this into a fun little game. I certainly uh, saw it earlier this year with a student that made the ball, rather than being a ball, he used a fly image and an ant image and a mosquito image. And instead of the paddle being a green square, he used a little fly swatter image. And so the game was to squash all the little insects. So that's a basic game that you could use for this little program that we've done. Um, you could also use the principles that we've covered in here to uh, make a little game of Pong. So you could have a paddle across the bottom or on the side and if the ball has hit the paddle then it can bounce and if it has not hit the paddle, if it's missed it, then it should stop the timer. Perhaps that's the next thing we should have a go at. Anyway, in the meantime, have fun with this animation.